Thursday, March 10th, 2022, Monaco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. Today, we're going to look at the LME or the London Metals Exchange and why their contracts are not worth the paper they're printed on. And uh, specifically, we're going to look at nickel and what's happened there. Uh, before I start, uh, again, I'd like to thank all of you for supporting the channel, for interacting uh, in the comment section, also for supporting uh, the channel through Patreon. I really appreciate that. Uh, the growth of uh, patrons uh, has been quite good in the last month for some reason. Thank you very much. And also uh, all of those who use my promo codes and referral codes for uh, gold investments and glint. And also those of you who sent me sometimes donations through PayPal. I appreciate that. So how we're going to start um, looking at the LME? Well, I think I need to explain to you what the LME is. And uh, yes, the London Metals Exchange. And uh, as you know, I worked as a futures and options broker for 20 years in, in the city of London. And uh, the LME was always uh, a different kind of market uh, than the traditional futures market. And I have some interesting stories uh, that I'll tell you right now. Uh, I remember uh, the first futures broker I, I worked for because when I came to London, I was working for uh, Cantor Fitzgerald. They were not really known as a futures broker at the time. And then I moved to a company called GNI. They were the biggest English, uh, really, futures broker on the Life Exchange, London International Financial Futures Exchange. And uh, we did not have brokers on the LME, the London Metals Exchange. And uh, I remember uh, G and I had a corporate membership at a really nice golf club outside London called the London Golf Club. And we used to go play there a lot. And I remember one of my colleagues uh, talking to me once when we were playing, uh, saying that, well, the guys ahead of us, the group ahead of us, uh, they're brokers on the LME. <laughs> and, and this was in the early 90s, and they were driving like Bentleys and uh, Porsches. And, and I thought, wow, they're doing well. And he said, yeah, well, in the LME, um, they make markets. So they take a, a huge commission wh when they do the trades. Uh, while in the futures market, at the time, we used to make maybe $2 a contract. So you had to, to do uh, thousands of lots a day or Maybe even uh, a thousand would be really good at the time. But the LME uh, brokers or dealers, uh, they made a market, which, which means it, what, it, it wasn't or isn't a traditional futures exchange where you match buyers and sellers. They were actually in the middle taking the risk. And that's why they were driving Bentleys. That's why they were doing well. And when the market is pretty stable, it's like taking candy off children. Uh, so that's how the LME works. It's not a traditional futures market. Another story about the LME and me. Uh, when I went to work at MF Global in 2004, one of my colleagues on the new desk that I was on, he used to... Uh, trade while well, he was still trading a lot in the LME, even though he was a broker, he wasn't in the LME itself. He was in an office like me and he used to call an LME broker to deal for his clients. And uh, he told me stories of how in the past, Nigel Farage was his LME broker. So Nigel Farage was uh, an LME dealer or broker. So that's his background. And another thing I want to say, uh, it is not the major market for gold and silver, the LME. It's for industrial uh, or base metals. I think the LME does have a gold contract, but it's irrelevant. They do not do precious metals. So now to what's happening in nickel. Uh, one interesting thing, though, 
if you go onto lme.com, onto that page, their page website, uh, the first thing you hear, see is the World Center for Industrial Metals Pricing, and then it changes to the World Center for Industrial Metal Hedging, and then the World Center for uh, in Industrial uh, Metal, uh, let's see what else it says, it's changing, trading. <laughs> so nothing about delivering the metal, all about paper trades, I would say. Yes, there probably is delivery, some delivery in the uh, LME. They do have like warehouses throughout the world where uh, the metals are delivered. But I, I would say <laughs> it's all a paper game. <laughs> and I did something here for you. Uh, this is a piece of paper, of course, A4. LME Broker A, I promise to sell you a thousand grams of copper. So, I, you know, if I took that from an LME broker, uh, yeah, that's what it would be worth. It, it's not even worth the paper it's printed on or written on. And that's why you need physical. You see, there's a thousand grams of copper, um, a kilo of copper. So uh, let's go through what happened in the LME. Um, and there's a lot of talk that it was a Chinese metals tycoon that, that, that faces billions of dollars in losses. Uh, but um, the reason they've canceled trades, and, and, and I think that's really a, a really bad precedent. And I think it will probably even happen in a lot of other exchanges especially the LBMA, which is the London Bullion Market Association. Uh, yeah, also the COMEX, but a lot of people forget the uh, foreign exchange market in London is the biggest uh, foreign exchange market in the world. It's even bigger than New York. And gold and silver are traded uh, uh, over the counter on, on the foreign exchange market. And the LBMA is supposed to regulate that. And, uh, but I would say that the LBMA is just like the LME in terms of what it does. The World Center for uh, Bullion Pricing, Bullion Hedging and Bullion Trading is not, uh, you see, they control the price through paper. And uh, as I said, when markets are normal and there aren't crises and people don't really want the real metal, they're just speculating and trading for profit in this. And, and that's why when people talk about, oh, should I sell my gold now? Uh, well, if you're trading paper, yes, sell it or buy it. Or, but if you're holding the real thing, why are you going to change it for something that's worthless, right? So there is no substitute for physical. So let's see here. There's a story here on Bloomberg from yesterday, it says, LME says dealers. You see, it's not the, just the Chinese tycoon that was losing his shirt, but the dealers as well. It says LME dealers would have struggled if nickel trades had stood. So they would have lost their uh, Bentleys, uh, their multi-million pound houses, and their expensive uh, golf club memberships. So that that's what... Uh, uh, Matthew Chamberlain, who is the uh, CEO of this exchange, did, and uh, he, he saved the, uh, the dealer's bacon, and, and the exchange would have probably gone bust because uh, an exchange without the dealers, is there, there is no exchange, and, and you have to understand that these dealers don't only deal, deal in nickel, they'll be dealing in all other metals, so if they're not around to deal, uh, the whole thing implodes. And the other thing I would say that made has made London so far, and by London I mean the city of London, uh, International Center for Trade and Banking, it is that old dictum of my word is my bond. So when you tell someone, you shake hands, you say, you know, I'll sell you. <laughs> a thousand grams or a kilo of copper, you mean it. <laughs> and, and it means you have it. But now London has been found wanting. London is a paper, it's a paper game. And I think uh, 
The same thing is going to happen uh, to gold and silver and other commodities in the near future because we are in a commodity super, super cycle. We're going away from the paper game into the real game, real things. So let's go through this article here uh, by Mark Burton and Anna Edwards, uh, March 9th. Some traders on the London Metal Exchange would have struggled to continue their activities. And by traders, they mean the brokers or dealers. And uh, what about like what my friend used to do? Well, he wasn't like a, an LME dealer. He had access to one uh, LME dealer or broker, Nigel Farage, and uh, the broker would make him a price and he would, yeah, broker said uh, 20 bid at 22. So uh, my colleague would buy it at 22 and then, because the client wanted to buy it and give it to the client at maybe 22.1 make a, a, a tenth or a, or a dime on it, while the LME broker probably would, would have made $2. Uh, but when, when you get volatility, those $2 can be wiped out and you keep, they can lose a lot more. So let's continue. Um, struggle to continue their activities. If the bourse hadn't suspended the nickel market and canceled trades that drove prices sharply higher on Tuesday morning, according to Chief Executive Officer Matthew Chamberlain. So, yes, uh, during the uh, Hunt Brothers Silver Squeeze in 1980, uh, the COMEX didn't cancel trades. <laughs> what they did is they didn't allow people to open new trades to buy silver. They only allowed liquidation. But this is unprecedented to to come and like cancel a trade that someone did. This is a, a huge warning, uh, not just for commodities, but every uh, market out there that these people can cancel a trade. I mean, this guy should be put in, I, I mean, the uh, LME is, uh, uh, this is like, a, I, I think there will be a lot of legal um, challenges to the LME. I think they will be in trouble. I mean, to cancel a trade, I wouldn't touch the LME with a barge pole. Uh, LME is finished. And uh, yeah, so let's continue here. The comments from the LME CEO hint at the magnitude of the potential losses that brokers and traders faced as prices more than doubled on Tuesday. Bloomberg has reported that some brokers and users were already reeling from a similarly unprecedented unprecedented spike on Monday, with a unit of China construction, construction Bank being given more time to post collateral with the exchange to cover losses by leading nickel producer Xingshan Holding Group Company. It would, it would have been extremely difficult for some of our market participants to continue their activities. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Chamberlain, but that's life. You, you, don't, you don't just uh, cancel things. Chamberlain said in an interview with Bloomberg TV, and he, quote, he said as well, the ability of the financial system to get that money to the members in London and, and into the exchange, I think would have been significantly stressed. So the LME went bust, really. Trading remains halted in the nickel market and the bourse doesn't expect activity until at least Friday. That's tomorrow. Uh, and even after restarting, it will keep the training wheels on. <laughs> trading will only open in European hours to begin uh, and with a 10% daily limit on price moves. The exchange said it's also looking to a mechanism to reduce the short positions in the market before the restart. <laughs> yeah, the netting off large, long, short position holders on a voluntary basis. Chamberlain said he recognizes the frustration. I, I think it's more like outrage among some market participants after the suspension, but said the exchange will get more credit in the long run for having uh, stepped in to ensure financial stability. Well, I, I think it's the uh, first nail in the coffin of the LME, Mr. Chamberlain. These exchanges need to uh, 
get their act together. They need to stop this uh, paper game. They need to trade real things. And I think the same thing is going to happen to COMEX, but even more importantly for gold and silver, the LBMA. That's the granddaddy of all the paper games. It's even worse, I would say, than the LME. And uh, hopefully that will uh, have awakened you or made you aware of what the game is all about. It's a paper game where, as the LME says, it's a, a leading uh, exchange for pricing, hedging and trading. But you don't get the real thing. And, and then uh, when something happens, they cancel everything. And it's going to be the same thing for for gold and silver on, on these uh, paper exchanges. And uh, you need to be careful as well with the ETFs, I would say, because they're linked to uh, LBMA. They're linked to the COMEX as well, the GLD and the SLV. So with that, let's quickly look at where the markets are this morning. It's 8.34 uh, a.m. London time. Uh, yes, many of you are probably uh, kind of uh, shocked <laughs> at what happened to gold and silver yesterday. I wasn't because I I've said many times uh, and I've made videos before. Hold on to the gold bull and silver bull because it's called a bull market because if you ride a bull in the rodeo, it's really hard to stay uh, on top of the bull. You, you, you can be thrown off very easily. And this is how it's going to be uh, going forward, uh, the higher gold and silver go. Um, we're going to see more and more volatility. Uh, and a lot of it is just this game, right? <laughs> uh, this is stability. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I do have also... Uh, one of these. It's an angle hard uh, 50 ounce silver bar. So yeah, a lot of it is being uh, having the real thing. So yes, all it gives us is a bit more time to get out of uh, extra fiat that we might have. <laughs> so uh, where where are we right now? Well, gold is at 1985. It's down about six dollars. Uh, the high's been 1994 and the low 1970. So we're still almost around 2000. And I think, uh, yeah, we could see a consolidation for a few weeks in gold. Who knows? We could still even go down to 1920 which was a really important level, which is the uh, high from 2011. Who knows? Uh, yes, and, and gold did move up very quickly earlier this week. It, it, it was uh, going up like a rocket and so, so was silver. Yes, there's a lot of paper shenanigans, but it is what it is. And we just need to be patient uh, and sit through it. Uh, silver, uh, it's down 18 cents. 25.57 range has been 25.87 to 25.30. Uh, stock market uh, down this morning. The Dow is down two thirds of a percent, 223 points. The uh, Nasdaq uh, 100 is down 125, just under one percent. S&P is down two thirds as well, or 28 points. FTSE is down 38 points, or half a percent. Uh, the Euro stocks 50 is down almost 2% at 36.88 and the DAX is down 1.2%. So to the currencies now, the pound is down a quarter of a percent at 131.53. The Euro uh, likewise is down a quarter of a percent at 110.45. The dollar is unchanged versus the yen, uh, 115.85. And the dollars unchanged versus the U1 at 632.63. Um, Aussie dollar is up slightly at 73.34, and the dollar is up uh, about 0.15 of a percent versus the Canadian dollar at 128.25. Uh, the Kiwi dollar is unchanged 68.42. The other thing I would note. Uh, the mining stocks like silver and gold mining stocks actually, yeah, they were down slightly yesterday, but 
for uh, the amount of, uh, for the percentage that gold and silver, the bullion was down, I was surprised that they held up uh, relatively well. So I uh, just wanted to put that out there. To the commodities, uh, WTI crude is up 3.5% at 110.15. Uh, Brent crude is uh, up almost 5% at 115. And uh, high grade copper is up 1% at 461. There are some uh, headlines yesterday about the UAE um, saying that they would help the West, that they would probably increase oil production. And it's one of the reasons why crude uh, had a flash crash. But then I saw something on Twitter, and I think it was the FT who re that reported that story. And then uh, something on Twitter came out, uh, UAE officials denying that, and then they came back out saying they would. But the UAE is not really, I think they produce a, a third of the uh, oil that, let's say, Russia produces. And, and I don't think it would make much difference. I, I think it was just a something trying to calm down the markets, the oil market, a, a headline to make it, the algos react. So I don't think anything's changed long term for commodities, of course. Uh, we will have a, a lot of these uh, corrections on the way higher in the next few years. So let's finish off with the uh, bond market. And the uh, bond market is a little bit worrying, I think, for for the powers that be, even though overnight the 10-year yield is down about three basis points, uh, it's at 1.92%. It has been creeping up quite a bit of late. And uh, yeah, so if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button. Please share it far and wide. Think about subscribing to my channel if you haven't yet. And you can also follow me on Rumble, Twitter, Facebook, and all these other platforms below here. I wish you all a great day. Take care. Bye.